We're at Higher Cherrybrook Bridge, between Two Bridges and Post Bridge, but to the locals, this place is known by another name, the Hairy Hands Bridge. For over a hundred years, this place has been the site of some strange goings on, involving a ghostly pair of disembodied hands. A number of people driving along this remote section of road started reporting the same odd story, beginning around 1910. Their cars or motorcycles would suddenly veer off the road, steered by two spectral hairy hands. To begin with, victims of the hands would merely end up unharmed in a ditch. But in June 1921, the medical officer from Dartmoor Prison, one E.H. Helby, was killed when his motorcycle sidecar was driven off the road. The two occupants of his sidecar, daughters of the prison governor, survived, reporting that Helby, in his last earthly moments, had shouted at them to jump clear and that he was wrestling against an invisible force as he tried desperately to control the doomed motorbike. Later in the summer of 1921, a coach is said to have left the road around this location and an army captain claimed that a pair of hands, this time invisible, took hold of his motorcycle and forced it off the road. A well-known journalist, Rufus Endel, told a friend that the same thing had happened to his car. And in 1924, author Theo Brown was staying in a caravan near this spot. Here are her own words picking up in the middle of the night. I knew there was some power very seriously menacing us near and I must act very swiftly. As I looked up to the little window at the end of the caravan, I saw something moving. And as I stared, I saw it was the fingers and palm of a very large hand with many hairs on the joints and back of it, clawing up and up to the top of the window, which was a little open. I knew it wished to do harm to my husband sleeping below. I knew that the owner of the hand hated us and wished harm, and I knew it was no ordinary hand and that no blow or shot would have any power over it. Almost unconsciously, I made the sign of the cross and I prayed very much that we might be kept safe. At once the hand slowly sank out of sight and I knew the danger was gone. I did say a thankful prayer and fell at once into a peaceful sleep. We stayed in that spot for several weeks but I never felt the evil influence again near the caravan. But I did not feel happy in some places not far off and would not for anything have walked alone on the moor at night or on the tour above our caravan. The official explanation for all these events is that the road around the bridge had an adverse camber. Cross-ply tyres in those days could be fairly unstable at the best of times, and a sudden abnormal change in the pitch of the road surface was said to be enough to force drivers to lose control of their vehicles. However, cross-ply tyres and a wonky road aren't enough to explain the experience of the couple in the caravan. For another possible explanation, we need only venture a little over the brow of the hill, to the historic gunpowder mills, the remains of which can still be seen today. The gunpowder mills were opened in 1845 and closed in 1897, and between those dates were a thriving hub of industrial activity, manufacturing gunpowder for the tin mines and the quarries that are scattered across the moor. Having such a remote location is an advantage when you consider the consequences of an industrial accident in a gunpowder factory. And accidents there were. The utmost effort was made to make sure nothing could ever set off the gunpowder made and stored in large quantities here. But accidents can happen. And that might provide an alternative explanation for the hairy hands. The story we've heard is of a powder mill worker named Jethro, who was finally due for retirement after a long and illustrious career here. On the eve of his retirement, Jethro headed to a local inn, possibly the Warren House Inn, just a short walk across the moor in that direction with its ever burning fire. In celebration of his retirement, Jethro drank a little too much ale and that night collapsed into his bed fully clothed. The following morning, the day of his retirement, Jethro made one fatal error. Hobnail boots were banned from the powder mills, as a single spark could be enough to set off the whole factory. But in his groggy, hungover state, Jethro forgot about this and set off to work cheerfully still wearing his hobnail boots. Within seconds of arriving for his last day at work, 
poor Jethro was blown to smithereens, along with much of the factory site. And all they ever found of Jethro were his huge, hairy hands. You'll pass along the section of road in question when you travel from two bridges to Post Bridge. There's a car park near Higher Cherrybrook Bridge, just at the corner of the woodland around Belliver Tor, and it's definitely worth a walk up to the panoramic views across Dartmoor at the top of the tour, if the weather's good. Post Bridge is a mile away with a great visitor centre, a shop selling snacks and a pub selling food. At the powder mills there's a shop selling handmade pottery. Our top tip for dining is the quirky Warren House Inn, just past Post Bridge, whose fire has been burning constantly since 1845. I'm Abby Gray, an archaeologist and historian who was born, raised and now works in Devon. Together with my producer Dave, we want to bring Devon's history and folklore to life for you and viewers around the world to enjoy, from the earliest Iron Age hill forts up to the Second World War and beyond. But we really need your support to help us do this. Every extra person that subscribes to our channel and likes our content helps us increase our potential for making more videos. So if you want to help us shape the documentaries that we want to make, please do support us on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you.